Lesson 8, the line of sight tool. We're going to abandon the Eastern Gate scenario and open up uh, just some generic boards. You may have noticed, uh, I don't know when you're watching this, you could be watching this the day I record it or a year from the day, day I record it, but I just installed Vassal Module 6.5. Make sure your Vassal VASL module is always up to date. So if you haven't updated it for a while, go to vassal.info and grab the latest one and update it. So let's launch uh, Vassal. For me, I'm launching the new version as of today, which is 6.5. There's the slowly loading dialog window. Uh, so let's start a game offline. And let's add two boards. So add a row. Let's do board two. I think that's the, yeah, it's the one with the hills. The classic board and board four, which is the flat board with some grain on it, and just hit finish. These are pretty well known boards to any squad leader or advanced squad leader player. Although, me myself, I haven't played on either of these boards in years. There are so many boards um, available now. So, the line of sight, line of sight tool is one of the most important tools in the Vassal uh, tool shed, I guess. Um, the two, there are two versions of it. There's the draw line of sight thread uh, on the upper left toolbar, and then there's the draw silent line of sight. Now, the only difference between the, the, these, as far as I can tell, is the information it displays in the information slash chat window here. So let's do a full line of sight. So just click on the, uh, the button here or hit F10 to activate it and just... Uh, just do a quick line of sight like that. And it'll show in the dialog window here, it'll show that I checked line of sight from, you know, a specific board hex to, an, to another specific board hex. In this case, board 4K3 to board 4Q4, and it'll display the range of six. Now, if I redo that using silent mode, make sure I did go to the right, same one. All it says is, you know, check line of sight. It gives no other information. So your opponent doesn't know what line of sight you checked, on what, on what board you checked, uh, etc. But the thing is with uh, squad leader slash ASL etiquette is you shouldn't be checking line of sights anyway on your own. You should be doing it, doing it for a specific circumstance, like making a firing attack, fire attack, a two hit attack, checking for interdiction to see if you have line of sight for interdiction. Uh, maybe if you have line of sight to an off-board artillery, spotting around a hex, etc. You shouldn't be doing just random um, invisible, not invisible, but silent line of sight checks. Every line of sight you check should have a meaning. So I have never actually used silent line of sight check in an actual game. I only use the peer line of sight check, and that's only when it's called for. You shouldn't be checking random line of sights anyway. That's my two cents, and that's basically squad leader etiquette. Now, there are a couple settings here uh, I want to cover. Actually, I already have the setting on. Let me turn it back to uh, preferences. So here's your line of sight settings. So file preferences, go to the line of sight tab. Um, I'm going to turn this verbose line of sight mode off real quick and do another line of sight. So if we do a line of sight, I, I did it from a hex vertex, just do K3 to N4. Uh, it just shows range. It shows you no other information other than the two in the dialog, the two hexes that you, the origin hex and the, the end hex. Now let's go back and turn on preferences turn on verbose again and that's when you'll see the information that I was displaying before let's go over here and do a line of sight so it'll show you in T5 that's a level 0 hex it'll show you the level of the beginning hex and the level of the end hex the range and the number of hindrances in this case or let's try to go through these woods here whoops Uh, again, it'll show beginning hex level, end hex level, range, and it'll tell you 
why it's blocked. It's blocked in T4 because uh, the train is higher than both the source and target hex, the beginning and end hexes. So the verbo verbose mode is actually kind of handy and very cool. Uh, let's do uh, something from a height. Let's go from this height and come down here. So you can see I'm on a level three and M5. And as I go down, it'll show you the level of each hex and the range. Now you see here, it starts to turn red, which indicates the line of sight is blocked to that vertex and why it's blocked in the dialogue there, in the verbose. Now there's another setting for those colors and I'll show you the settings that I use uh, for the line of sight thread. I'm going to go back into the dialog box. Okay, let me show you that real quick. So go to File, Preferences, and here's where you can set your line of sight thread colors. I have my just my default line of sight color thread to be black. Um, and then I have my hindrance to be yellow and a blocked to be red. So if it's a if the line of sight is fully clear, the thread will be all black. If it goes through hindrance, the part that goes through hindrance will be yellow. And as soon as you hit an obstruction, anything beyond that hex will be a red hex. So let me demonstrate that. And you kind of saw that in the preview. So let's check a line of sight, just a line of sight in the open, just black hexes. No, totally clear, no hindrances, no obstructions. Now let's uh, go try to look through these woods here. So it's clear, clear, clear to that hex. As soon as I go to a vertex or a hex center beyond that, it turns red. Now the red, at least in my color setup, means your line of sight is blocked. It's a really quick and easy visual indicator um, to tell you that it's blocked. Now in some situations, you need to actually, you might have to actually zoom in. This is clearly blocked. But if you're clipping just the edge, and I probably it'd take me a while to find a good example. Uh, let me try this. Now, if you're just clipping the edge of a grain symbol or a, a wood symbol and it turns red or it doesn't, but it's really, really close, make sure that you zoom in on it anyway. Let's see. That one's pretty cool. I'm sure that's blocked. Let's zoom in on that. Yeah, that's even close. Uh, looks like a little bit peaks on the other side. Uh, my point being is the line of sight thread isn't infallible, right? Make sure that you also, if it's, if you get situations where it's really close, zoom in and look at it and, and make a call that way. Don't, don't trust on the thread and the color changes of the thread. Um, implicitly and trust them all the time if you have very close situations. So zoom in and check everything. Uh, so let's go to a hindrance. Let's just run through this wheat field here, see what we get. So you see it's clear to that first hex. There's no hindrance, obviously. Um, the second hex in, you have one hindrance. The thread turns yellow. It's a little hard to see on the yellow grain. You feel free to change your, you can change it to orange maybe. Um, two hindrances uh, at V6. Uh, and then as you continue through, uh, it just says you have three hindrances and gives a range. Now, if we go through some hindrances and into this woods, that's four hindrances to there. If we go behind it, you can see that it's black to the grain and there's no hindrance to X5, but you have hindrances through the grain. But as soon as you hit the woods hex, the thread turns red and you're blocked. So I suggest if your setting is to be one color black, I suggest changing it to a three color mode, a clear line of sight mode, which you could be black or any color of your choice. Uh, the color for the hindrance, if you're running through hindrance and a separate color for um, an obstruction. I uh, use a yellow and red because intuitively it makes sense. Yellow, you're going through hindrances. It's kind of a warning. You go through an obstruction. It's red. It's blocked. You're not shooting at anything behind an obstacle. So 
consider making those changes to the color of your thread. Consider turning on uh, verbose mode. That'll give you more information on um, how much is blocked or how much, how many hindrances you may have and why uh, a line of sight might be blocked. Well, let's do a situation where sh we're shooting through more than six uh, hindrances. Let's shoot from the stone building in X1. Let's shoot through all of this wheat and see what it does. So it looks good. We're just, we just have some hindrances building up as we're shooting to different, different hexes. And then you see here, as soon as we get beyond uh, six, sec six hindrances, the thread turns yellow, meaning you've accumulated too many hindrances and you can't see, you don't have a line of sight, you can't shoot to it. So we've got one, let's verify, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven. We might actually have seven. Let's zoom in there. I should change that to orange. In fact, I am going to do that. Let's go to preferences. Let's change this to, let's try that. I might have to redraw it. Oops. I can see that a little better, but uh, again, it's the differentiation between the orange I picked and the red is kind of subtle, but you can see it better on the uh, yellow there. So it looks really close uh, in that hex. It probably misses X6. So got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, this would be the seventh hex. So your line of sight beyond that is blocked. Very cool. Line of sight too is very powerful, very important to the game. Um, I know a lot of people uh, make comments that the line of sights on the um, Vassal boards differ slightly from the line of sights on the physical boards. And some people actually play with a physical board next to them and they'll check line of sight on Vassal. And if they don't like it, perhaps they check it on the printed map and make a decision that way. I myself think that's kind of a waste of time and you're defeating the point of playing on Vassal. I mean, the terrain you play on, both players are bound to that terrain. So a line of sight is either clear or blocked or marginal, in which case you just kind of roll for it, whether it's clear or not. You're going to have the same problem on printed boards. Printed boards have variability as well. You could check a line of sight on my board. Some guy across the country could check it on his board, and it's possible we could get two different answers anyway. So just because it's printed doesn't mean it's more accurate than a Vassal board. It just means both players are playing under the, on the same terrain, and a line of sight is either clear or not. Um, so I wouldn't worry about trying to verify on a physical board if it matches a Vassal board or vice versa. Just play on the boards um, that you have, whether it's Vassal or physical, and try to enjoy the game. A um, couple other things under preferences line of sight. Uh, retain line of sight hindrance counters. I have no idea what this does. I've tried messing with this, toggle it on and off with shift F10. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what this does. And snap thread to grid also, as far as I can tell, does nothing. Whether it's on or off, the line of sight thread always snaps to vertices and center of hexes whether it's on or off. So you can try playing with those on your own. I couldn't get them to really do anything, but I, I would focus on uh, obviously enable line of sight checking. Uh, always have that on, but focus on uh, setting up your thread color the way you want it. That works for you. Black for thread color clear, yellow for hindrance, uh, red for completely blocked, and turn on vo verbose if you want some more information. So that's line of sight in a nutshell. Uh, it's a great tool. Without it in Vassal, it would be very difficult to play. You'd probably be holding rulers up to your monitor, which is no fun. So um, next lesson, lesson nine, I'm going to go over how to add um, more info to your scenario setup. And we're going to go back to the Eastern Gate and add things like phase markers, uh, a turn record track, north arrows, um, informational boxes. If you if you would like to add that, basically get it 
set up so the next step would be adder it pulling your order of battle from the counter set and you'll be actually be ready to play um, a full scenario so lessons one through ten um, installation to building your order of battle and you'll be ready to go and then the lesson 11 will be how to set up and connect to the server join rooms and play with your friends online so if you find this useful again subscribe below leave me comments suggestions things you want to see and i'll try to cover them um, until then rollo